Hey guys, today we have a very exciting tutorial in integrating Flutterflow with a third-party electronic signing platform such as DocuSign and DocuSeal and PandaDoc. So this is basically what we will build. So we have a very simple electronic agreement information input page where you can input buyer and seller information. And when send agreement is pressed, uh, a, doc, a signing a, a submission is created and an email is sent to the user by the third party platform where they will need to click the link to sign. And here we have already inputted the buyer's information based on the app. And then all they need to do here is just sign. Once they have signed, we actually have a webhook in the back end to listen to the status of it. So we can see here the status is still pending because the seller hasn't signed. Suppose the seller has signed, which we can quickly do now. The webhook will automatically update and change the status to completed and an order log is contained, allowing the platform to see and check what was the process of the buyer and seller signing. Before we get started, remember if you like my content, remember to comment, like or subscribe for more content on Flutterflow. A notable example that you may all know about uh, in terms of electronic signing is DocuSign. So DocuSign basically allows individuals to sign a document. So what happens on DocuSign and other document signing platform is that a PDF document will get sent to all the individuals for signing. And then they log on to the respective DocuSign document and where they can input, a, input their names and other information required in addition to the actual signing component. Let's just say your Flutterflow platform has some kind of requirement that requires the user to sign on an external party such as DocuSign uh, to, to enforce some legally binding contractual agreement. We can actually use and tap into these third party services. I won't be using DocuSign, however, I've done it with DocuSign before for a client. Um, I will be using DocuSeal, which is a cheaper alternative to DocuSign. It behaves exactly the same as DocuSign, where the submission, they call it in DocuSeal, is sent to both uh, to all the users for signing. And then the user subsequently signs the information. Before I go into the flood flow itself, I would like to explain how I've set up the document in DocuSeal. So it's a very simple document. Imagine you have a contract agreement. They are both buyers and sellers, two parties so far. Let's make it very simple. And then at the bottom of that document, you would have some clause about whether they've read it by the buyer and the seller, a signature and the name and today's date. So this is basically a blank template I've just created and uploaded to DocuSeal. And you're able to draw um, what text field is required and edit these information. So for the buyer name, I've simply, for this field, I have inputted buyer name, and for this field, I've inputted buyer signature. These fields are unique because we actually use these field name in our API call later on to initiate um, the sending of the documents to both the buyer and seller. In terms of getting your API access on DocuSeal, it's quite easy. You simply go to your settings and then you have your um, auth token here. Um, so you just go to settings and then you go to API. From a Flutterflow perspective, I've created something simple. Um, you can design it however you want, but I just wanna show you how it works in terms of setting up this connection to DocuSeal or DocuSign if you wanna use that. So basically what we have to match the um, our template is basically information about the buyer and seller. So seller name and seller email address, and then it's buyer name and buyer email address. When, I, when we press send agreement, we'll make an API call to DocuSeal to send that um, envelope to the respective buyer and seller's email where they can subsequently sign. And then here at the bottom, I would like to show you also the status. So we will have, we will, so we will create a webhook to listen for the status um, and then subsequently also show the audit log allowing to allowing to us to check the log of this document that's been signed so this is basically front-end design 
you can ultimately design however you want based on your platform. So for example, if your platform is a platform that facilitates transaction of high value items that where there's a buyer and a seller and you need them to sign a contract, you can basically pull the information from your Firebase backend about the seller or the buyer and then sending the agreement using that information. And then we will also be able to track on the platform who has signed and who hasn't signed and the log of it. Ultimately, it's up to you. I want to show you how you can do the connection, but your app is specific to yourself. So I won't talk too much about how you should be building your app. So how do we set up the API call to make this work? So DocuSeal actually provides an integration with Postman. Um, I don't know if you've heard of Postman before, but Postman is a very powerful API tool that allows you to test API calls prior to actually implementing it. It has a pretty nice interface. So when you press run in Postman, you can actually create a fork of the actual API calls that um, DocuSeal has provided. So this is Postman itself. So I've already created a fork of the API call that DocuSeal offers. So I can test it using Postman. So you can see here are all the API calls that's available. You can see there's template API related calls, submission related and submitters related. So for example, once you've, uh, you can easily copy the authentication here and then paste it in authentication key value here, which is a variable currently I've set up. Um, anyway, the point is that you can easily use Postman to test API call, and this is a very powerful tool. So for example, I make an API call here to list all our templates. We can see here, we just created one template called Flutterflow DocuSeal template and there are all these fields available. There's buyer's name, which is of text, and seller name of text, and so on and so on. Um, but you get the idea that we can use Postman to do pretty amazing things. So how, so what is the main API call that we need to send the agreement between the buyer and seller? In DocuSeal, it is creating a submission. So they call it a submission. In DocuSign, they call it an envelope. Different wording, but same purpose, where we're sending data to the user um, to create an envelope for signing. So what kind of information do we need? I've already created something very basic. You can further read the submission information um, about all the fields that are possible by looking at the documentation. As always, documentation is the best. So for example, you can easily go to credit submission. You can see here, if you want to send an email, you can send an SMS. If you want to change the order, um, currently we're passing as random, but if you want one party, the first party to go first, and then the second party can sign, you can write as preserved, you can BCC, you can write a custom message, and so on and so on. You can do a lot of customization based on your needs. But, you know, let's keep it simple here. So what, how I've done it is, this is the raw message that we're sent, this is the JSON message we're sending to DocuSeal through our post API call. So we have the template ID, which we can grab by listing the template, or if you go to DocuSeal and go to the exact template that you're using, if you just press this API embedding, you can see the template ID is 75563. So if we, I'm gonna say send email as true, and order as random because I don't care who signs first. And in terms of the submitters you need are the two parties. So there's the role, which is basically who are the individuals. So you can easily able to identify the role by seeing it here. So when you customize your DocuSeal template, you can see there's buyer role and a seller role. Making sh Please make sure the name matches exactly. So here the role of the buyer is this email, this this email with a certain field called buyer name. Um, we can pass in default value, which we can easily pass on Flutterflow through this text field and then read only. So this means that the buyer cannot edit um, this field when they sign. And subsequently, a seller, um, seller information. So this is how you can easily, very basic, send a submission for signing by both the buyer and seller and setting default values for certain fields within the document. 
you can have all these other fields possible, right? Um, you can set a date, you can do a checkbox, you can do, you know, images and so on that you can set as default. But, you know, let's make it a very simple where we're just passing fields, passing text fields. So how do we test this? So I can actually press send now. And you can see here, there is a response of submission ID uh, 134368. And this has been sent to both the buyer and the seller. And I'll show you what it looks like from a buyer perspective. So here is the email uh, received by the buyer. You can see that you've been invited to submit the form. Um, you just click here. You, know, you can customize that message anyway. So you can see here that we have through the API populated the buyer's name, so they don't need to enter it, and a date, which is a signing date. You can see here the seller hasn't signed yet. So th the behavior is that the buyer can, you know, draw the signature and sign it, and then they can also download it. And subsequently the su seller would have received the same email and they can sign and um, save it. Once it's both signed, it, the actual document is actually sent to both um, individuals as its final in its final state. I will leave the signing of the seller till later because I want to show you how we can use the webhook to listen for the state on our platform. I'm going to stop here. In this lesson, we covered setting up DocuSeal in addition to making a very basic API call while Postman. In the next lesson, we will connect this API call in Flutterflow so we can send the document using Flutterflow front end.